But but when it, when it's game time though, you need somebody can make those throws, man. You you need somebody that can read that defense quickly, get that football out of his hands. That's what quarterbacking is in the NFL. And you know, I, I think he's gonna he's working at it. We'll see if he can do that going into this year. But uh, the, the, everybody loves the kid. He's, he is a good kid. I mean, he, he, he works he, hard. He, he. He's a great guy. Everybody's pulling for him, man. I mean, I have people to stop, you know, uh, like some of them say, man, why are you so tough on Jalen? I'm I'm not tough on him. But I got to call it like it is. The league's tough. Gary, the league's tough on him. I'm going to ask Gary Cobb that question. Let's bring in my friend Gary Cobb from Fox 29. He's going to love this question. Holy cow. Okay, we're playing something here, Gary, and I'm going to ask you. You had to have a successful season with this football team that we have assembled here with Howie Roseman. What quarterback would you want to quarterback your Eagle team? McNabb, Nick Foles, Carson Wentz, or Jalen Hurts? Well, <laughs> I'm looking at their uh... – you know, what they've done as an eagle, I'd have to go with McNabb. I, I think he did more with less. You know, uh, you know, he learned to take care of the football. Uh, he was going to uh, create things, you know, with his legs and everything. But he, he, he played winning football. I mean, a lot of times they won close games. I mean, it, most of the close games they won because he took care of the ball. They weren't, like, blowing people out. But consistently, you know, they, they won the division. They went to the playoffs. For that matter, it went to the NFC Championship game. They, you know, they didn't win, you know, won one of those. But uh, when it came to winning a game, though, I think he played winning football. And, and I think this year, you know, if Jalen takes care of the football, you know, now, he, you know, he's got to be, you know, be able to take advantage of the opportunities are there. But taking care of the football, really, with Carson Wentz, if Carson takes care of the football this year, Washington's going to be tough. I, I, you know, I know a lot of people looking, they've given up on, on him, but you look at his numbers last year, 27 and seven. I think if he goes 27 and seven with that Washington defense plays the way I think they're capable of, you know, I think they're going to be in the hunt. So, but, but Donovan, he played winning football. He, he played the game to win the game. You know, that's why he would go in there. And uh, a lot of times it's, it's, a, it's a quarterback who will make plays, let's say in that red zone, but he's got to take care of the ball. If you're turning the ball over, you don't win in the NFL, you know? And, and I know a lot of people, they don't concentrate on that, but if you're turning the, over, over that ball, you know, I, I'm up here, I'm up here uh, in North Jersey, you know, you got all these giants up here, man, you know, uh, Harry Carson's up here, you know, and, and, all, and <laughs> yeah, all, all these guys are up here, you know, all of the, the you know, the, the teams that won, you know, you got all of the, these giants up here. Hey, they knew about, you know, you had to take care of the ball. And that's what it's going to come down to. Now, they're asking me about their quarterback. Their quarterback, I'm going, this kid, this kid doesn't have a clue. He's out there like he's just, like, lost. And, and I don't see where he's gotten smarter over the years. That's the thing that really concerns you. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know if he's, he's the right guy for them, if they're ever going to win with that kid. But you got to be productive as a quarterback. But you got to take care of the football, you know. And if you don't take care of the football, you probably maybe need to start thinking maybe about some other line of work. <laughs> Gary, I, I, I'm getting sick of this kind of conversation here. That when we talk about quarterbacks, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna read a list to you here. Okay. This is what everybody says to me about your boy Jalen. Yeah. He's great with the media. Yeah. He's got great poise. That's right. Hold on. He works hard. Yes. He's a good leader. Uh-huh. He's a good competitor. Yep. He's first in, last to leave. Yep. He's friendly. Now, yep. now here are my intangibles. He's accurate, big arm, can make all the throws, develops wide receivers, and is a playmaker. How come none of, how come nobody ever asked those about the kid? And I'm always talking about these over here. You know, I, I will say the thing, you know, I tell you this kid what he needs to do. If he doesn't make it as a quarterback, he needs to run for office. <laughs> I, you know what? Come on. It's, everybody's rooting for him. I mean, they like the kid. 
and they're all rooting for him. Whether they think he could be our quarterback or not, they love, you know, he's a likable guy. But, but when, it, when it's game time, though, you need somebody can make those throws, man. You, you need somebody that can read that defense quickly, get that football out of his hands. That's what quarterbacking is in the NFL. And, you know, I, I think he's, gonna, he's working at it. We'll see if he can do that going into this year. But uh, they, they, everybody loves the kid. He's, he is a good kid. I mean, he, 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 he's a great guy. He's Everybody's good. pulling for him, man. I mean, I have people to stop, you know, uh, like some of them say, man, why are you so tough on Jalen? I'm going, I'm not tough on him. But – I got to call it like it is. The league's tough. Gary, the league's tough on him. That league is tough on him. Okay, the league, it's not so much, you know, we're having a little fun here, but it's the league that's tough on the guy. That's why sometimes when you and I talk, one week he's here, one week we're there on him. One week we're here, one week we're there. And people go, well, you guys are flip-flopping. I'm going, no, his inconsistent play makes us talk about him like that. Yeah. You can't, you can't help but you got to call it like it is. There are times when he, he doesn't see what's out there. See, and that's what you got to do. You got to be able to you walk up to it and you got to read what, what they're showing. Now, I will say that he has been maybe the last five years, he's played a different offense every year. I mean, like they change offense. This is the first year where he's playing the same offense with the same coaches. So I, I, I think we can probably expect that he's going to see things better. And I think as he sees things better, the whole thing comes down then is the decision making. You know, and you, you got to take what's there. If a guy's not open, you can't force it to him. Now, that's Carson's problem. Carson will say, no, I'm going to get that ball into that guy. Look, the guy's covered. Don't throw that ball. You know, you can't turn the ball over, especially, you know, you're playing against a good team. You go into that game knowing the team that turns the ball over, really, a lot of times in the NFL, one team loses. Not so much one team wins. One team loses, meaning like they, they're turning the ball over and they give the ball, to, they give the game to the other team. And that's quarterback play. See, you know, that's quarterback play. So I hope, I, you know, I'm rooting for the kid. I like him too, but I, I tell everybody, you, I hey, Gare, hey, yeah. everybody loves the kid here. Let me ask you this. Yeah. All right. All that aside now, let me throw this at you here. Who do you believe is going to get the majority of the credit? Let's hypothetically say that this guy throws for 4,200 yards. They get to the NFC Championship game. He turns out to be the guy. Are you going to give credit to Sirianni for developing him, or are you going to get give Howie Roseman credit for finding him? I probably, you know, I don't know that, I, you know, I could say I could give that credit to Sirianni right away. like that. So I probably maybe give more credit to Howie and that how he went out and he got, you know, I mean, he went out and he got people with him. I mean, he's got, you know, get, you know uh, AJ, you bring him in here. That, that's an outstanding move. That is the kind of move I think that, you know, you start talking about, you know, um, you know, the, the, whatever they call it, the front office guy of the year or whatever, however they, they don't term it like that. But, you know, that type of move, meaning he went and got him a number one receiver. Now we were all talking. You know, he, they need to improve the receivers. Did we dream he could go get A.J. Brown? No. I'm like, he can't get A.J. Brown. He's like, Unbelievable. So he went out and got him. That's and, and that really, I think it puts Jalen in a position where there's nothing he can cry about after this year. He's got the pieces there to, you know, you got a great offensive line. You got a great running game. You know, you, you got Devontae Smith, who's a kid that should be looking like a – an outstanding number two, and you got him a number one. You got a good tight end. You got all the pieces there for them to have an, a, a good, effective offense that scores a lot of points. Gary, who do you think is the most underappreciated player on this roster? Underappreciated? Well, you know, you, you could look at the offensive line, you know, uh, but when I say mm, underappreciated, that's a good point. Um, Guy that doesn't get a lot of love for the work that he puts in and has been there and is a solid player, but nobody really circles him and goes, mm. you know, that guy right there, man. I mean, is, is there a guy that's a blue pail guy out there that goes to work every day or is it there's no one out there? Is there a guy that's just underappreciated? Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I think Goddard's a good player. I think Goddard might be a guy who people don't realize that he's one of the best tight ends because he's complete tight end. He can do How about it. Mulata? What's that? How about Mulata? 
Now, Malata, definitely, Malata's a guy who nobody dreamed he would be this good this soon. Uh, so, you know, with the fact that the offensive line is probably the strength of the team, you know, maybe Malata's the guy that we don't appreciate yet. Uh, because as well as he played last year, a lot of people had, had him rated as the third best tackle with the way he played. And, you know, he's dominant. Uh, they like to run on that left side. You know, they're running behind him a lot on that left side. So maybe he's the guy. Maybe you could, you could say Mulata's the guy. Last question for you. This secondary, now that they added the kid from San Francisco, you think this group has a shot at being elite? I mean, when you look at now the talent that they have added now, they, they've addressed the safety position. They've addressed the cornerback positions. They got a one and a two now. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Bradbury does. I know there's a lot of question marks, but are you higher now on this secondary group prior to what we saw with free agency in the draft now and what they've done? Uh, most doubtedly. You know, uh, the whole thing, though, is, you know, they got to gel together. You know, I, I want to see turnovers. I want them going after the ball. That's what the big thing I think that, that needs to be emphasized. And I hopefully defensively, they emphasize the turnover. Because the secondary, with the corners they have, they should be able to play man-to-man. -man. It should be a team that's going after the ball. I think they're going to get a decent pass rush. So they, if they, they can force turnovers, I'm telling you, they're going to be in a, a team that's hosting games in the playoffs if they can force turnovers. So uh, I, I hope that they get to that. I think they got the talent to get to it. But you got to go out and do it, baby boy. You got to get out there and do it. I tell you what, Garrett, looks like you're in a really good place. The last time I was at a Giants party it was LT's place over in the Meadowlands, and I won't say what went on upstairs. I'm just saying you look like you're in a good place with some of them dudes there, and I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're up here having a good time. You know, we got a little rain. The rain cut off. Uh, you know, the boys came up here for a while, you know, while it was raining. So, you know, guys are out there smiling on the course, so uh, – I can't say how they're playing, but they're out there smiling a lot. <laughs> Very good. Gary, we'll catch you next week. Thank you, my friend. All right. Have a good one. You got it. That's my friend, Gary Cobb. By the way, we're going to be throwing some of those questions off of you that I asked Gary so that we get you guys' thoughts. Hey, I'm a helper here. Okay? That's all we're doing here. My friends at Morgan & Morgan are also helpers, okay? They're here for you if you've ever been hurt or injured on the job. Know this, finding an attorney is one of the most important things that you can possibly do for you and your family, knowing this. For the past 30 years, Morgan & Morgan has collected over $13.5 billion for their clients. That could be you. For the people, my friends, it is not a slogan. It's who they are. They're the biggest law firm in the country, and we are so proud to be involved with them. Over 800 attorneys strong all across the country in offices in Philly and in New York and in Florida. Do me a favor, call them at 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. Open 24-7, seven days a week. 800-512-1600. Again, when you call Morgan & Morgan, you'll understand this. The call is free. The consultation is free. And when you do call them, tell them Big Sill sent you. After a car crash, the big insurance companies you see advertising on TV, they may try to downplay your case and might say it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS, not us. We put ourselves in your shoes and ask, what would it be like to be in your pain for the rest of our lives? A million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people.com.